like to welcome you all today to today's presentation, and we'll be looking at strategies for ensuring good documentation practices, also known as GDP. Just what we need is another set of acronyms, right? Our learning objectives for today are that we are going to review the features of good documentation, identify the connection with GDP and quality management, define responsibilities in relation to good documentation practices, and discuss the proper procedure for identifying and correcting any documentation errors. The general philosophy of a good quality system, and it's very easy, it's say what you do, do what you say, and prove what you say and do. And that proof portion is really what is most important, especially when it comes to, let's say, recreating this situation, recreating the trial, especially in an auditing environment. So the question that we may have then is that, is the expectation to document every activity that you perform? And actually, it isn't. And we're going to go further and, and really discuss this premise or investigate this premise. So let's take a look at some definition of what is actually a document. And I'm sure you all know, and this may be very redundant for you, but basically by definition, it's information, which is meaningful data, and it's supporting medium, which could be in paper form, CD, computer files, or microfilm. And who knows what the next set of supporting medium will be. The documentation is the recording of the data and the review of the documents and approval of the documents. And it's also the issuance and disposal of documents, retrieval of documents, and the presentation therein. So all of these processes or procedures really must be described in quality system documents such as standard operating procedures. And I'm sure that we all have documents that talk about archiving and things of that nature. An essential part of the quality assurance system should exist. And why is it important for us to have this? Well, for, it started out primarily in good manufacturing practices. And the reference for that is the WHO GMP Volume 2. But the good documentation practice is an expected practice. When I worked in general research or, or basic research in a pharmaceutical company, even though we were not a GLP environment, we were still required to follow those same practices that are identified in good documentation practice. So it is expected in the research environment. We want to ensure that we have complete correct, current, and consistent information that effectively meets our customer and stakeholder's requirements. And theoretically, our stakeholder, our customer, ultimately, if we're doing clinical research, would be the FDA or any regulatory agency that we're going to submit to. But we also have our internal customers as well. So we have multiple expectations, but basically it is to follow the good documentation practices. And it will help to reduce observations raised on inadequate documentation practices. I just completed a 30-hour workshop on auditing. And that is one of the primary things, obviously, that auditors do is to inspect documentation. And so it's very important that we, we follow these directives when it comes to how we do good documentation. So what constitutes good documentation? We want to be able to approve, review, and update documents. And a lot of companies now will have something like Documentum or Master Control where we can send the documents through, let's say, a review session. And that we would have an electronic sign-off when we're finished or approving a document. We want to have changes in current revision status of documents identified. So we would have version control identified so that we would determine when things would be, let's say, a full version up number or whether it would be an incremental of a version. And usually you'll have some guidances or guidelines within your company as to how you would do version control. You would have relevant versions of applicable documents available at points of use so that in systems such as Documentum, you would have all of the versions available in there so that, that you can see the iteration of the document. And you also would have, let's say, a, a revision history such as you would have in your standard operating procedures for those of us in data management, we would have a version history or revision history in our data management plan. You would have documents that would remain legible and readily identifiable, documents of external origin identified in their distribution control, and to prevent unintended use of obsolete documents and archiving. 
So you would have then the rules of when you would archive certain things and to ensure that you are following the appropriate guidance for your version control.